it definitely felt like there was unfinished business too with with the world heavyweight championship like it felt like i was so happy when you won and i mean how many actual seconds did you have the championship for it was like 14 seconds or something like that <laughs> well, I, it was I'm longer than that come on <laughs> i'm the shortest reigning heavyweight champion or world champion of all time in impact but the so. longest reigning tag team champion so uh yeah, and if in you know three to four weeks I don't lose this world championship, I will be also the longest reigning world champion of all time. So, <laughs> it I, I just like that was brilliant booking. It was very smart to like have him cash in, take you out, and like you know, ultimate heel move. You're in the in the ring with your family celebrating, and then out of nowhere, spears you, and it's one, two, three, and it's all over. Brilliant, brilliant. And then I love that you had the chance to actually like get the championship again and have a, an actual run. Yeah. And like that whole thing from like fans were outraged, you know, because of course. So happy, you know what I mean? Which rightfully so that's why you booked it this way. But like from October until April, when I faced Moose again, I never got my rematch clause or anything like that. And it was all this weird, like, you know, pro wrestling explanation of why that wasn't happening, but it was this chase of me trying to get back to that and going through all these, you know, hoops and wrestling monsters like Jonah and everything else. But fans got to know me better than, you know, when I went into that match with Christian, they knew me as the guy that had this really good X division run and was a really good wrestler, but they didn't know me outside the ring. They didn't know my character, you know, all this other stuff. And they really got to know me up at the point where, you know, at rebellion, once I won the world championship, everybody knew exactly who I was. When they pitch you the idea of, of the first win, do they, how do they pitch it to you? Do they tell you at first, all right, just don't get too excited. You're going to win, but then immediately lose. How, how do they pitch this to you? It was pretty much exactly like that. <laughs> it was, it was, Hey, uh, we're thinking you and Christian at bound for glory in the main event. I was just like, it was probably like summertime, like August or July when they said this and I went, Oh damn. Okay. Yeah. You know, that sounds really cool. And like a big opportunity. And they go, but you know, I, I, Moose is going to cash in and you know, take it right off you immediately. And I went, okay, cool. Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Sure. And uh, like, it's, it's, you know, I don't write the show. You know what I mean? Like uh, I trust you guys. And uh, you know, the whole time leading up to that for that next three months, you're just like, hopefully they change their mind, man. That'd be cool if they change <laughs> their mind. You know, that's, that's in the back of your head, but then uh, you know, it all happened how it happened. And I think everything, you know, I'm not an everything happens for a reason guy, but like you definitely look at the pieces of things that have happened along the course of my career to put me in the place I'm sitting right now. And I, I think everything has kind of happened the way it should have, you know, to uh, maximize everything that's happening in my life now. So. Since you were a TNA guy growing up, who were some of the people you really looked up to or some of the matches that really imprinted on you? Well, I, I remember me and my friend, we got off our shift at Subway and got back to my house just in time to turn on the very first pay-per-view. Wow. And yeah. Because actually, we were wow, so it was like $14.99 every, what was it, Thursday? Yeah, I might have, my dad might have had a gimmick satellite dish where, you know, if you come to my house, we're going to get this for cheaper or free. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I turned it on and I remember the flying Elvis is against Jerry Lynn, AJ Styles and Loki like it was yesterday. Yeah. And we were so blown away. I, I remember like, you know, being blown away by like AJ. I knew who Jerry Lynn was already. I didn't know any of the flying Elvises, nor, you know, did like they make an impression on me that night, but it was really low key. Cause I was just like mm. walking this guy, watching this guy make his entrance. And I'm just like, he's so small. And he, he looks like, you know, he's got this weird presentation to walk to him. But the second he started wrestling, I was like, that guy is a badass. Like he, he completely took everything, all this trained, you know, whatever it is in my mind that a pro wrestler has to be this and look this way and carry himself this way to be a badass that I've been trained with watching WWF my entire career in WCW. Loki threw that out the window within the first like five seconds of seeing him in the ring. And I was just completely hooked. And that's why, you know, I, I, I watched TNA from there on 